The Lord be with you. Welcome to St. Mary's Church here in Bonclody, where we'll be worshipping today using the Book of Common Prayer, 2004 edition, with the green cover, Morning Prayer, beginning on page 101. A sentence of scripture from Isaiah chapter 40. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his Spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth will proclaim your praise. God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. In place of our canticle, we sing the hymn Jubilate, hymn 701 in the church hymnal, Jubilate, everybody, serve the Lord in all your ways, based on Psalm 100. Jubilate, everybody, serve the Lord in all your ways and Come before his presence singing, enter now his courts with praise. For the Lord our God is gracious, and his mercy everlasting. Jubilate, jubilate, jubilate Deo. Jubilate, everybody, serve the Lord in all your ways, and come before his presence singing, enter now his courts with praise. For the Lord our God is gracious, and his mercy everlasting. Jubilate, jubilate, jubilate Deo. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, beginning at verse 18. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has God not made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation 
to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Here ended the first reading. The appointed psalm for this, the third Sunday in Lent, is Psalm 19, which proclaims firstly the glory of God through his creation, and then also the second revelation through the Holy Scriptures, through the Word. Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. One day pours out its song to another and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands and their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. Are the judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, much more than fine gold, sweeter also than honey dripping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often they offend or cleanse me from my secret faults? Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they get dominion over me. So shall I be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be now and forever acceptable to you, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. We now have our second reading read for us by Mrs. June Jackson from the Gospel of John. Three, two, one. Second reading. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 2, beginning at verse 13. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. Here ends the reading. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be now and forever acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Well, those words of prayer which come from our appointed psalm for this Sunday, Psalm 19, end a psalm which is wonderfully designed to remind us that in worshipping God, we worship God outside in nature. And the first line says, the heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. And we are also worshipping God through the word and the word made flesh in Jesus Christ. And it is referred to in verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is pure and gives wisdom. So, in both senses, this church is attempting to reflect something of the majesty of God. And even the ceiling, which in the cathedrals of the medieval wonderful builders of that time uh, are so high, are high for that reason, because they are attempting to give expression to the firmament of heaven, the glory of God. And some of them have even gone to the trouble of painting uh, the night sky. And so they would be full of stars and moon and constellations. And so it upsets me at times when I hear people saying that unless the church is open, then we can't pray. Uh, unless the church is open, we cannot meet God. And in this time of a pandemic, I was delighted to see my good friend, Reverend Connor O'Reilly, the curate in Wexford, on the back page of the Enniscorthy Guardian this week. And the title is quite stark, Keep Churches Closed Plea by Church of Ireland Curate. But of course, all he really means is that while COVID is a danger, we need to be very careful. And we need to recognise that there are many ways of worshipping God other than by crowding in to an enclosed space like a church. And so I thank Connor for his outspokenness and for um, speaking the reason and the responsible uh, way in which uh, I believe Christ would want us to behave, to look after one another, loving our neighbour uh, and loving God. So you might wonder then why in the gospel we have Jesus getting very worked up about the money changers and the behaviour in the temple area uh, in Jerusalem. And it is tempting to think that Jesus really wanted to protect the building and that it was all about the behaviour inside the building and not a concern what happened outside the building. But when we read that gospel again very carefully and Jesus is challenged about the authority that he has to do what he's doing, causing an upset to all of the people who are I suppose, trying to earn money in the temple, he is uh, reminding them that not only when he says, you could destroy this temple and I would raise it three days about the power of God, but he's reminding them as he says, and as it is spoken here, he was speaking of the temple of his body. So for Jesus, the new covenant is not about particular building or a tabernacle or a place that people have to travel to to find God. God is to be found wherever the Holy Spirit in the risen Christ is present and that is everywhere in the heavens, in the firmament, in the rivers, in the mountains, in all of nature. So today is a very good gospel, I believe, to reflect on in this time of COVID, 
that we can worship God wherever we are. And we can take our Bibles with us wherever we go, and especially in the Psalms. And the Psalms are such a resource of wisdom and empathy and emotional honesty uh, between God's people speaking and listening to God. And we have Psalm 23, of course. The Lord is my shepherd, an outdoor scene. The Lord is my shepherd. And we also have in Psalm 24, the earth is the Lord's and everything that is in it. Again, worshipping God throughout all creation. In Psalm 42, as the deer pants for the water, so my soul cries out for the Lord. And so all of these are outdoor scenes reflecting the spirituality and the magnificence of God's creation. And so even Psalm 84, and at times when we lived in South Wexford and in Ladies Island, there were swallows actually just over the door of the church. And Psalm 84, how lovely is your dwelling place. In it, the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest. And that resonated because it was a dwelling place we thought about the church. But in reality, when you read that, and you say, where is the sparrow finding a home? It's not likely to be inside a church. Even the swallow, we call them barn swallows. They nest in outbuildings, but very seldom will they be nesting. I know in Lismore Cathedral, I think they do uh, nest there. They leave the door open and in they come. But ordinarily, we're talking about the great cathedral of earth, sea, and sky. So, with that in mind, Psalm 19, reflecting on nature and reflecting on the Word, why not reflect that in our worship? And I'm just making a suggestion this Sunday that we continue to worship on a Sunday in one of the four beautiful churches in rotation in this Bonclody Union of Parishes, but on a Wednesday where we used to worship, I know, in this parish, uh, have a, a Wednesday uh, worship and a gathering and a prayer uh, on a Wednesday morning. Um, we could do that and record it, but we could do it outdoors. And perhaps um, I'd start off next Wednesday in the rectory, in the grounds of the rectory. Um, but after that, can I ask you to suggest places, whether it be up Barnahask, I know beautiful views up that area, or along the river in Clonny Gaul, or the various highways and byways and beautiful places around Kilrush. Um, all of these places, or even down the main street in, in Bunclody. I mean, it is just about giving some expression to the magnificence of God's glory throughout all of creation. And in that, I'm remembering somebody who loved the land and who expressed his faith through his working life as well as here in church, our brother in Christ, Noel Deacon. And Noel, who I'm sad to say I didn't get to know, um, but uh, in speaking with Avril and, and the family, it is very clear to me that Noel recognized the magnificence of God and that there was nowhere that God could not be found and spoken with and listened to and learned from through scripture and through nature. And so as we pray for Avril, for Warren, for Cora, for Andrea, for Noel's mother Olive, for Noel's brother Joe, for his sisters Heather and Iris, and all the family and knows many friends, we pray these words which reflect the spirit of God in nature and in the word and through the people we meet. Good people like Noel Deacon who will never be forgotten. Gracious God, enable us to listen lovingly for your word in the mouths of those we meet, in the wonders of nature, and in the wisdom of Holy Scripture. 
May we console each other with the message you proclaim of Christ crucified, who rose from the dead and lives in every part of our lives. And so may we find light in darkness, comfort in despair, and joy in sorrow. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, Mr. Sam Jacob will play that wonderful hymn. Hymn 247 in the church hymnal, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour contempt on all my pride. Let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers, and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit and the colics for this, the third Sunday in Lent. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent, Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Continuing in prayer, we pray. For the peace that comes from God alone, that by our lives we might do God's will on earth as it is done in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Church of Christ, for Michael, our Bishop, for each person praying with us here today, especially those who are exploring a vocation to serve God in a particular ministry, perhaps even ordained ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the world's peoples, for all in authority, for President Michael D. Higgins and for our government, and especially for the Health Service Executive, that together, working as a community, we all may overcome the COVID-19 pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we pray for this community around Bunclody and Clonigal, Kildavan and Kilrush, for our families and for our friends, that we might support one another and stay safe. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we pray for the good earth which you have given us, that we might worship you all the more, when we see you expressed through your creation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and suffering, for all in hospital and nursing homes at this time, for all who are sick at home, especially those living alone, we pray for all in any need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for all who work in our community on the land, especially all involved in lambing and calving, all who work in the meat factory, all who work in business and in public service, and also those who cannot find paid work at present. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. Lord God, we pray for those who mourn, especially remembering the heartbroken family of our dear brother in Christ, Noel Deacon, who has gone home to his Lord and Saviour. May all who are grieving know that they are in our prayers. And we pray for all the faithful who have gone ahead of us, whom we entrust to the Lord, as we look forward to the day when we too can share in the fullness of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Rejoicing in the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our lives to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. To God, who by the power at work within us is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and be with all those you hold in your heart and for whom you are praying, this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.